Hello, today I'm talking about The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides. This was published in 1993, the year of my birth, um, and I'm gonna go off script. No notes in this video, I just wanna chat about it. This story takes place in the mid 70s in a small town in Michigan, and it is about these five sisters, Cecilia, Lux, Bonnie, Mary, Therese, those last three are the wrong order. Um, they're all one year apart in age, uh, 13 to 17. Um, and it's basically about how they kill themselves. The first line of the book reveals that everyone kills themselves. So like, not a spoiler. It has a very interesting narrator because it is told from the perspective of a group of boys that were observing the Lisbon girls in this time period, um, but told kind of retrospectively far in the future when they have accumulated a lot more information about what happened then and they have like exhibits. And the book is written taking into account those things. So it's the perspective of we, but it also says like, uh, as you can see from this exhibit, or, you know, we spoke to this person years later, and this is what they're doing now. So when the book begins, the youngest daughter, Cecilia, slits her wrists in the bathtub, um, and she survives. And then a couple weeks later, um, the parents agree that the girls can throw a small party because they're not very involved in like social life at school. They're quite a unit. Um, so the parents think it might be a good idea for them to have a party. So they invite a few of these neighborhood kids down to their basement. Um, all the girls are there dressed up and whatever. And then Cecilia runs upstairs, jumps out of a window and like spike fence through the stomach and dies. And from there on, the majority of the book is just like the slow decay of this family and the withdrawal of the children and like lack of housework that's been done. And it's all seen from the perspective of these boys. So we never really get an idea of what is going on. And we never really know what the house is like inside because you only get vague snippets of like, oh, this person went in on this day and they reported back that it was this, but that conflicts with this other information we have. At one point in another effort to integrate the girls with their classmates, um, the dad agrees that they can go to a school dance because Lux, who is the youngest surviving daughter, um, she's a bit, she's a bit fun, she's a bit spicy and she really wants to date this guy. And she convinces him that the only way she's gonna get to go to the dance is if he invites three friends and they take all of the sisters out. But then Lux breaks curfew and then they're pretty much never allowed out again. They leave the school, the dad who is a math teacher in the school eventually leaves the school and their house is just decaying. Towards the end of the book, the boys um, who are writing this narrative realize that the girls are trying to communicate with them um, through these kind of signs um, and they start responding and having this conversation mostly through music over the phone which is really lovely um, and then a plan is hatched and I'm gonna leave it there. I don't have to tell you that I absolutely adore this book. I have read it a lot of times, probably about half a dozen times, but this is the first time I've read it in maybe five years. It was so lovely coming back to it and I was a little bit worried that I wouldn't love it as much, but it so held true. First thing I wanna talk about is the language. Um, this is often thought of as a very kind of airy, spaced out, ethereal book, um, but really I don't think the language is that flowery. I don't think it's very romantic. I think it's great and it very subtly pinpoints what's going on. But I think that Eugenides is way more flowery in Middlesex in terms of like his literal style. But there are some things in this book that are just so beautiful in terms of description. And I think specifically the way he describes um, people that kind of dip in and out is in like, you know, Peter came and said this thing, is that he usually gives like a one phrase description of that person and it can be about absolutely anything, um, but it just really evokes their relationship to the story. For example, Jo Hill Conley, who fooled around with Missy Larkin every so often, brackets, she'd had a year long crush on him despite his frequent shaving cuts. Like that's all you need to describe exactly the kind of like doting person that Missy Larkin is to Joe Con. Like it's, oh, it's so perfect. I also absolutely love Eugenides' descriptions of kind of decay and dirt um, in a quite an appealing manner. It's something that I feel like I don't come across very often. Um, people kind of glorifying things that don't tend to be considered beautiful. And although that's mostly the opinion of the narrators, uh, I think he picks up on these kind of small things that give you a really well-rounded kind of understanding of whatever they're describing. I think the perspective of the narrators is one of the most fascinating viewpoints I've ever read from because it is, it's straight up voyeurism. Like they are totally peeking into these, the lives of these girls and clearly have this absolute fascination where they all need to know as much as they can possibly find to kind of get an understanding of these girls, but they never really do understand them. 
and that is so nice that you can kind of imagine um, all of this grief that these this family are going through and the depression that the girls are going through and how they kind of cling on to each other um, but only through kind of descriptions of their actions and never actually descriptions of how they're feeling. The boy's viewpoint is intense and it's idolizing and it's it's very intimate. It's a very intimate form of voyeurism and it made me realize um, that I have, I think everyone, their favorite books all have some sort of theme and it's made me realize what my theme is which is a bit strange and it is gaslighting. Specifically a narrator very much doing something wrong but them spinning it in a way that doesn't make it look wrong or them not addressing how wrong it is because what the narrator is doing this is essentially stalking these women like they don't have any right to understand the intimate details of their lives or find out from all of these sources what they're doing at any specific time um and it doesn't, it comes off as kind of doting and quite lovely when really it is stalking. Some of my other favourite books, Lolita, Pedophile, um, Secret History, Murderers, they seem to have this thing in common, but I, I love it. I think thinking complexly about the narrator and the, the whole way the content of the book is given off, I find it a lot more interesting than trying to think complexly about like a theme or a plotline or a character in a book. I feel like labelling this as stalking takes away the kind of sweetness of it because it is clearly through like absolute care and devotion um, and it's quite obvious like why they have this relationship with the girls as you read it um it, it kind of demonizes that relationship um but it's just a kind of interesting perspective to think about it from being like they're creepy but these girls oh they just can't quite be grasped by the narrator and therefore can't quite be grasped by us who read it it manages to be supremely powerful whilst being a very subtle novel to be honest it, nothing explosive happens um, and nothing even that is fairly explosive is described as such it's all very slow and they talk about the changing of the seasons and they talk about the community coming together to uproot this fence that one of these daughters has died on and they talk about the fish flies that cover the whole town every single element of this book just comes together to give it this mood of ethereality as i said before like it's not necessarily the language it's everything about it um and it is so tantalizing i remember reading it as a 16 year old and it kind of romanticized the idea of not really suicide but like having such strong emotions that you would be driven to it um which is a dangerous path to think down um but it's just such an evocative read that you are so absorbed in it while you're reading it i was at the sitsi booktube panel yesterday um and sana books and quills mentioned this book and she said that every chapter she wanted to kind of read it really slowly and only take it like a, a slice of cake at once because you want to stay in that mind space forever it is it is so absorbing and so tantalizing even though it's dealing with morbidity and like quite boring high schoolish suburban problems um it's so perfect i'm gonna stop gushing after this book now um i think we've probably had enough of that although i could definitely go on for hours i would love to hear from you if you didn't really enjoy it or it kind of jarred with you somehow because i kind of feel like maybe i absolutely love this book because i kind of like to seek out um this sort of aura and the these sort of topics um i don't know how it will come off if it's someone that doesn't want to love this kind of book uh but i absolutely do love it and i hope you pick it up if you are intrigued and i will see you soon for another video